Stand by. Stand by studio control. Ready to roll record. Roll it. Ready to roll VCRB and fade up from black. Roll VCRB. Fade up from black. Standby studio, standby control. Ready to roll record. Roll it. Ready to roll VCRB and fade up from black. Roll VCRB. Fade up from black. Ready to take camera three and crane down. Change graphic 2005. I'm Holly Toll. And I'm Heather Myers. In this 101. edition of Venue, students are being rewarded for tattling on each other at school. And the last Korean graphic. troops leave Lebanon Change after 29 15. years of military control. Ready the first two. joining us from the Venue Weather Center is meteorologist Eric Adami. Take two. And just yesterday we had snowflakes. Change what a beautiful two. day today uh, in the mid 60s. Graphic. Mostly sunny skies right now. Fresh cut grass out there. But will the weather News stick graphic. around? And for barbecues, well, I'll let right. you know in just Cameron a few. Cameron, can you Back zoom in and desk. get a close-up of Holly? Holly, in, in take one. In international news today, Change the last two. Syrian soldiers have left Lebanon, surrendering to international Brand and graphic. Lebanese popular demands and ending its 29-year military presence in its smaller neighbor. Camera two, Syrians can I awaiting them waved flags as the troops crossed two. the border. A formal ceremony right. marked the withdrawal in Ready the Battalion. Right About 400 <laughs> Syrian and Lebanese forces assembled on the narrow parade grounds and were jointly reviewed by the chiefs of Ready staff right for each one country. And, and Syrian 34. forces controlled much of the frame country's right affairs one. for 29 years, but pressure change came for them to withdraw after former Lebanese Prime Minister Rafiq Hariri was assassinated February 14th in a car bombing. Syrians entered the country in 1976 as peacekeepers in the Lebanese Civil War. By 1990, 40,000 Syrian troops remained. Over the last 15 years, the number had decreased to 14,000. Thousands of children in southwest Colombia began a third week without school Monday amid the most intense fighting between government forces and leftist insurgents in years, including an attack that killed one student. With classes suspended, hundreds of fearful civilians have sought shelter in the Sassidic School in Turibio, the main school in this part of the one. Andes, with about 7,000 students. Change graphic with seven. dormitories for teachers and students who live far away, it serves a rugged region inhabited mostly by Indians who do not want part in the conflict. The fighting erupted on April 14th when the revolutionary armed forces of Colombia bombarded Turibio, 250 miles southwest of Badoka, killing Yorfan Armando Torche, a nine-year-old at Sassidic. The fighting has now spread along at least a 14-mile front. Homes, vehicles, and even horses have been outfitted with white flags in hopes the waiting, the warring sides will not shoot at them. More than 3,000 people Ready, are two. killed each year in the conflict. Take two. In Brand national graphic. news, for a growing number of students, the easiest way to make a couple hundred of dollars has nothing to do with chores or after-school jobs graphic, and everything to do with informing five. on classmates. Tragedies like last, last month's right, deadly shooting at Red Lake, two. Minnesota school Change have prompted more schools to offer cash and other okay, prizes to okay. students who report classmates who carry guns, drugs or alcohol, commit vandalism, or otherwise break school rules. Critics call this the snitch program, saying there are a knee-jerk reaction to students' violence. Some education professionals fear such policies could create a climate, a climate of distrust in schools and turn students against each other. Some students fear classmates with a grudge or set on making some quick money may level false accusations or plant drugs or weapons in their lockers. A man who got a new liver by advertising on billboards has died eight months after the transplant. It was not clear whether Todd Krampitz, to who died Wednesday, succ two. succumbed to lose liver graphic. cancer, transplant-related complications, or some other Change cause. Two. Family members who did not return calls seeking information thanked supporters in the statement. 
Krampitz was suffering from liver cancer when he made his appeal in the summer of 2004, which led to his transplant that, transplant that August. The family of the dead man had heard that Krampitz had opted to donate the dead man's liver directly to him. Critics say Krampitz's transplant might have diverter, diverted a liver from a patient in greater need. Supporters argue that the family that donated the liver might not have donated anything at one. all without the media attention. Take one. Bring in graphic. local news, the high cost of fuel has dairy farmers feeling the pinch. Some say their fuel bills have nearly doubled in the past right year. A few farmers say hiring frame subcontractors right to harvest change their grain is actually cheaper than running their own tractors. The cost of fertilizer has also gone up due to high fuel prices. Farmers say there's only so much they can do to conserve fuel without disrupting their business. Milk prices are at a high right now, but they're not making much of a profit because they have to factor in the fuel increase. Tolls are going up on the New York State Thruway. This is the first time in 17 years. The hike will go, up, will go into effect beginning May 15th. Thruway tolls were supposed to have disappeared in 1996, but state officials decided to continue tolls as a way to fund maintenance of the highway. Most passenger car tolls will be raised 25%, and commercial truckers' tolls will be up by 35%. The Easy Pass motorists won't see much of an increase in the prices. The higher tolls are expected to bring in more than $150 million annually. Thruway officials say the increase will help fund Ready, a $2.6 billion construction program for the 640-mile superhighway. Take two. Bring More graphic. drives are headed to the Griffiths Business and Camera Technology one, Park in Rome. Anchor anchor Today, two. officials announced CDG Management will be Ready opening a call left, center in Rome, New York, next month. The frame telemarketing company plans on hiring up to 150 people. Mohawk Valley Edge officials say the park continues to grow. CDG primarily performs fundraising campaigns for safety organizations. The company is working with Working Solutions in Rome to hire for positions. For more information on setting up an interview, you can call Working Solutions in Rome at 315-337-7300. New York's juniors and senior senators are asking the government for more money to make railroads safer both here and abroad. New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg and National Homeland Security Director Michael Chertoff joined Hillary Clinton and Chuck Schumer during yesterday's news conference at Grand Central Station. The leaders asked for increased federal funding for rail safety. Recent accidents on the railways here in the states and in the deadly Madrid terrorist attack last March have made rail security a top priority in the war on terror. This was Chertoff's first to New York since taking over as Director of Homeland one, Security. Take one. Ready to roll music and take camera three. And when we come back, we'll have a look at campus news and events. Roll Stay music. with us. Take camera three, crane up, ready to roll VCRB. Roll VCRB. Take VCRB. Take camera one, I need a, need a close up of anchor one. Two. You don't need to be bigger than life to be a good dad. You just need to spend time with your kids. It takes a man to be a dad. Hey, Hector, it's Patrick. Through the NFL and the United Way, Patrick Kearney of the Atlanta Falcons makes calls to seniors. Camera one, I call when he might be a little more? down. He calls, but it's mostly when he's a little down. Hey, more? Hector, it's Patrick. Patrick Kearney knows hey. what matters. We talk about everything. Even football. Tilt up. He asked me for advice. Hey, Hector, it's Patrick. Hey, Hector, it's Patrick. Hey, Hector, it's Patrick. You don't have to be Patrick Kearney to make a difference in your community. You're going to have to speak up a little bit. I love hearing the smile on his voice. Don't thank me. It's the least I can do. Whether I'm taking off on the road or in the air, I always buckle up. Buckle up like the Thunderbirds. Remember, it's the law. Every family in America should prepare uh, itself for a terrorist attack. You can learn how on our new website. You can call for a brochure. Terrorism forces us to make a choice.
On June 4th, my big brother was sentenced to seven years in prison for a gun crime. Could you tilt down a little bit? That day, he sentenced me to seven years without ready my best friend. Ready to roll music and ready camera three? When you commit a gun crime, your family pays the price. Roll music. Take camera three, crane down. Ready camera one. Tonight at Brain 7 graphic. p.m. there will be an exciting multimedia trip frame, through the 80s with Barry 40. Drake, one of rock, frame, one of rock one. music's foremost change historians. His lecture is 80s rock, music in the video age. The event will take place in the Hunt Union Ballroom. To lose graphic Tomorrow, and April 27th, one. Cool lose Hand graphic. Luke will be shown at 7 p.m. in the Red Dragon seven. Theater at Hunt Union. After the film, there will be a discussion. This event is part of the relig religious studies here at SUNY Oneonta. For more information, contact Dr. James Preston at 436-3511 or Dr. Mark Mann at 264-9490. Take two. Beginning Brand tomorrow, graphic. April 27th, and running until Rate April 30th, two, and Mask and Hammer presents 41. Cabaret. It will frame be performed in the Goodrich Theater change in the Fine Arts Building. Tickets are $3 with the SAC card and $6 for general admission. For more information or to make reservations, call the Mask and Hammer box office at 436 3100 or send an email to mask and hammer at yahoo.com. On April 28th two. at 8 p.m., come out to lose the Hunt graphic. Ballroom to see the Flying Cat Circus. <laughs> this center circus has, has fire eaters, glass walkers, Change comedy magic, two. and much, much more. It's the Ready world's funniest one. circus. The event is free with a SAC card, but $3 for general admission. Take one. Bring graphic. The Sisters of Phi Sigma Sigma right are having a babysitting event at SUNY Oneonta's Hunt Union frame on the right lower one. level at the waterfront. Change the graphic They're 40. inviting all children grades K through 6 for a night filled with babysitting fun. It's only $10 per child and all proceeds go to the National Kidney Foundation. The babysitting one. will last from 6 to lose 9 graphic. p.m. on April 30th. For center more information one. or any questions, contact Marissa Goldberg at 436-5198. There will be an extreme air experience, a free fall, on Friday, April 29th. To participate in this event, attend the parking lot in front of the Hunt Union between the hours of 1.30 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. The College Union Activities Ready, Council two. sponsors this event. Take two. Brand graphic. On Sunday, May 1st, Rate is our annual left Native two American Festival. It is being frame held at the two. college camp. Join Change us for dancing, 41. singing, craft workshops, and more at Camera this year's event. The festival will run from 12 noon to 5 p.m. Phone Snap or Peta at 436-3455 for more information. On Thursday, May 12th, between the hours Center of 7 two. and 9 p.m., there will be an evening program entitled Child and Adolescent Bipolar Disorder. This event will show video from the prior conference, will provide up-to-date information about the dealing with disorder and helping those who have it, and have a period for questions and answer with a featured panel. The event will take place at the Wellness Conference Room of the Fox Care Center on Route 7 of Oneonta. No registration is necessary. All are welcome. For more information, call Beth at 432-8824 or Riva at 436-3318 or 432-0210. Take one. When we come back, Eric Adame has a look at this week's weather. And I'll have a look at National and Red Dragon Sports. Ready to roll music. Stay with us. Roll it. Take camera three, crane up, ready to roll VCRB. Roll VCRB, dissolve to VCRB. Take VCRB. Just having this on your driver's license doesn't make camera you Camera one, we need to frame up the meteorologist. Get on the green screen. Make sure they know your wishes or it won't happen. Talk to your family about donating life Meningococcal meningitis. Two, we didn't know college kids are at risk. And the vaccine has been around for years. My child didn't okay, have good, to Cameron die. One, tell Eric to, floor manager, tell Eric to sit down. Charles. Charles Bennett's high school dream was to teach in the old neighborhood. But without the money for college, all he got was the old neighborhood. Support the United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Whether you need to Format, work or you Eric in front of the key wall really finding quick. time for everything is difficult. One of the best ways I've found to have the time I needed to be a successful soccer player and student is summer sessions. Taking summer courses gave me the free time I needed for soccer while still earning all my credits. 
Summer session is a great way to lighten your regular semester load and take courses you need that are hard to get into during the regular school year. Summer session helped make me a champion. It can help you too. Check it out. Okay, Eric can sit down. I don't care if you're rich or poor, young or old. Camera two, can you zoom in a little bit? I will come That's out. That's good, you. thank you. I will hit you so hard you won't know what day it is. You'll want to scream for help, but you won't be able to. I'll cripple an arm or leg or maybe, just maybe, I will kill you. I am a stroke. Learn to recognize a stroke and act quickly. Time lost is brain lost. On June 4th, my big brother was sentenced to five years in prison for a gun crime. That day, Ready he sentenced me to three. five years of walking home alone from school. When you commit a gun crime, your family pays the price. Roll music, take camera three, crane down. Ready camera two. Take two. And Eric joins us for a look at this week's weather conditions. Ready, still what storm is with chroma key? Well, it looks like a lot of changes, but once we get through today and the big change happens, we'll pretty much stay in, in the same type of weather, but it doesn't look like the type of weather that we're looking for. In fact, April showers type weather for the last week of April, and hopefully we'll get those Mayflowers by the first week of April. But uh, we'll look outside right now, and Dissolve we can have a beautiful door? day right now on our hands. So get out there if you haven't, and enjoy the day. It's about 68 degrees Camera right now, three, actually. Right angle, Very much a pressure holding pretty steady at 1,010 millibars. And we have a southeast wind right now at 8 miles Change per hour. So 15. that is keeping that warm air in our area for most of this afternoon. But like I said, big changes are in store for us. Record highs looking back at the Almanac 83 in 1962 and 21 in 1967. Should be about 59 and 35, so well above normal for today. Yesterday, in fact, way below normal. 42 degrees only for our high and 30 two, degrees for our low. And our sunset and sunrise two. are here at 602 and 755. And we'll look at the satellite picture right now to see where the weather is across the nation. Two. And first, Bring there's graphic. this very large upper low system that's located in here in the western part of the Great Lakes. And that is actually bringing a lot of the cold air behind it. So that's actually what's in store for us. And that we have a cold front associated with that load that's extending to the southeast part of the United States. And with that cold front, we actually are actually seeing some severe thunderstorms. In fact, two severe thunderstorm watches are in effect until later on this evening and to early tomorrow morning. And right now, currently, two severe thunderstorm warnings in western Florida. But as far as we're concerned, we're concerned about this large shield of precipitation that is gradually making its way towards us. So that does mean that we will have more rain in our area for the next couple of days. And that is all associated once again with this low pressure system and its front extending to the south. And as we head into tomorrow, that will move eastward. And so as that low pressure gets closer, we'll see more clouds and, of course, precipitation. But what's behind this front is much colder air. In fact, we'll look at temperatures right now. And you can see in front of this front, we're getting those 60s, and that's what we're experiencing today. But as we get into the next few days, these 30s and 40s, will move our way, but they will modify, so we won't see 30s and 40s. We'll see more like 50s as we head into the end of the week. Let's look at temperatures for tomorrow, about 58 degrees, 59 in Albany, 59 in Binghamton, and as we head west in Buffalo, about 53 degrees there. Tonight, 48 degrees. We'll see those showers beginning probably after midnight as the fronts get closer <coughs> to our area, and tomorrow, rain showers. Some of those rain showers could be moderate to heavy at times, 58 degrees for a high, so we will keep temperatures not too cool. Tomorrow night, those showers, some of them will actually start to end as we head into the later part of the night, and as we head into Friday, we should see those clouds clearing out and having a pretty nice first start of the weekend, about Ready 59 degrees for Saturday and partly sunny skies. Sunday, though, I'm a little concerned. We might get some scattered showers in the afternoon, about 59 dissolve degrees. Dissolve to three? Temperatures, again, about 60 degrees, which is what Ready we expect camera to be this two? time of year. Yep. Thanks, Eric. And Heather, you have some sports for us? I do. Take two. Thanks, Holly. Uh, here's a look at Major League Baseball scores from yesterday. Change graphic 88. In the American League, this Green year graphic. it took Troy Purvisal almost a month to close out a win for the Detroit Tigers, and it happened last night when they beat the Minnesota Twins 6-4. to four. This brings the Tigers' records to 8-10, and 10, and the Twins now stand at 10-8. and eight. Change graphic 89. The Baltimore Orioles rebounded after being shut out twice by the Boston Red Sox last week with the 8-4 eight, eight victory. This brings the Orioles' record to 13-7. Boston's record is now 11-9. Change 
Should and the Chicago White Sox shut down any advantages the Oakland A's made when they finished off the game beating the A's 6 to nothing. This brings Chicago's record to 16 and 4 and drops the A's to 9 and 11. Graphic. In the National Change League, graphic, the New York 90. Mets earned all five of their winning Great runs graphic. in the sixth inning. The Atlanta Braves tried for a comeback but fell short after their last run was made in the ninth inning, leaving the score 5 to 4 in favor Camera of New York. This brings the Mets and the Braves record both to 11 and 9. It Change was a scoreless 91. game for the Cincinnati Reds and the Chicago Cubs last night, that is, until the ninth inning. In the top of the ninth, the Reds scored six runs, but at the bottom of the ninth, the Cubs came back with ten runs of their own and won the game ten to six. Now the Cubs record is ten and nine, and the Reds record is nine and ten. Change your graphic 92. And with three runs in the top of the first inning, the Arizona Diamondbacks took the lead and from there on held it against the LA Dodgers. By the end of the ninth game, the score was four to two. This leaves the Diamondbacks record at twelve and eight, and the Dodgers Change record graphic. is now thirteen and six. Change your graphic seventy. There was no games last night, so here's a quick rundown of the up-and-coming games for the Red Dragons. Bring in graphic. The baseball team had a game today that started at 1 p.m. on the road to Cortland. This is a makeup of a doubleheader for a game that was originally meant to be played on Sunday, April 24th. The softball team was in action today at 3 p.m. when they hosted a doubleheader against New Pulse. Change the graphic, 72. The women's lacrosse team also had a game today that started at 4 p.m. When, when they played host to Union College. And the men's lacrosse can next be seen tomorrow, April 27th, when they play a home game against Plattsburgh. Graphic, this game will begin at 4 p.m. Change graphic 103. That wraps up sports for today. Back Brady to you, camera Holly. one, take one. That's it for this edition of the venue. Music Join and us take Monday three. through Thursday for up-to-date news, sports, and weather. Thanks for watching. Roll music. Roll music. Take camera three. Crane up. Bring in graphic. We're going to feed the black in five, four, three, Two, one, fade to black. Clear. Stop recording.